between Fifth Avenue and the East River wouldn't know if you asked them that they lived or worked in the 21st. Whether they know it or not, the security of their homes, their persons, and their property is the job of the men of the 21st Precinct. The 21st, 160 patrolmen, 11 sergeants, and four lieutenants of whom I'm the boss. My name is Canelli, Frank Canelli. I'm captain in command of the 21st. I was working my day tour, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. I had reported for duty at 7.40, signed the blotter, and changed to my uniform in time to turn out the platoon which would patrol the precinct until 4 p.m. After I had read and signed reports and communications which had accumulated since I was last on duty, I began the quarterly inspection of the entire station house as required by Rule and Regulation 24. In the company of Patrolman Fallon, the clerical man, and Patrolman Bailey, the attendant, I started on the third floor where the offices of the Civil Defense Patrolman, the Youth Patrolman, and the old records are located. We then proceeded to the second floor and the 21st Detective Squad office and the precinct hack inspector. Then to the first floor and my office, the muster room, the 124 room, the back room, and the cells. At 9.35 a.m., we finished up in the locker rooms in the basement. After the inspection was completed and I gave instructions to Patrolman Fallon in regard to preparation of the report, I walked out into the muster room where Lieutenant Gorman was desk officer and Sergeant Waters was on telephone switchboard duty. Oh, what's doing, Red? Nothing much here, Captain. Telegraph order eliminating the 11th precinct. Oh? Patrol force in the 11th divided between the 9th and the 13th. Well, uh, what about the captain? Didn't say. Lieutenant? Yes. I'll call you bringing that. You still haven't been able to make that notification on 83rd. Well, tell I'll talk to him myself. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, Captain. Yeah? Father Bernard Creedy of St. Barbara's is waiting in your office. Father Creedy? Yeah, an assistant, Father O'Ban. Oh, yes. 21st Precinct, Lieutenant Gorman. I'll be in my office, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Well, uh, how many times have you tried? Yeah? Well, keep at it until you find something. Hello, Father. How are you, Captain? Just fine. What can I do for you, Father? Well, um, Father O'Ban thought you might be able to help me. Well, I will if I can. I'm about to go in the Navy, in the chaplain's course. Oh, yes. I'm supposed to get my fingerprints made and uh, send them in on this card. Well, the detectives can do that. Well, good. I'll take you upstairs. Well, I certainly appreciate your trouble, Captain. No trouble. That way. Upstairs to the detectives, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. That me a trip downtown. We're happy to do it, Father. Oh, uh, when do you report? Well, I don't have my orders yet. Uh, July 1st, I think. Mm-hmm. Up the stairs, Father. Thank you. Well, are you looking forward to it? Oh, yes, very much. Of course, I would have liked to have spent a little more time at St. Barbara's. Learn a lot from Father O'Ban. In there. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Father. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Detective. That way, thank you. Well, he's down at the grand jury this morning. I ought to be hearing from him, though. Well, hold on a second. Yes, sir, Captain. Is uh, Lieutenant King in his office? Yes, sir. He and Scanlon and DeLuca are talking to a robbery suspect. He'll have a minute. Yes, sir. I'm sure he will. All right, Father. Hello? Can I have him call you? Well, I'm not upsetting any routine, am I? Oh, no. Yeah? Yeah, I got it. Captain Canelli. All right, I'll give him a message. Yes, sir, Captain. Oh, Matt, this is Father Bernard Creedy, assistant to Father O'Ban at St. Barbara's. This is Lieutenant King. Father, I'm glad to meet you, Lieutenant. Excuse me. I'll be back in a minute, Scanlon. Now, what can I do for you? Oh, Matt, uh, Father Creedy is going into the Navy Chaplain's Corps. Oh, yeah? He's got to have his fingerprints made. Sure. I'll be glad to do it. Italian? Oh, I certainly appreciate it, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. Ma'am? Uh, on this card. Yes, sir, Lieutenant. The Father Creedy. Detective Vitale. Hello, Father. Hello. Father Creedy is going into the Navy. To take his fingerprints in the car he's got? Yes, sir. Over this way, Father. Yes. Have you ever had this done before? No, I've never had the pleasure. Well, thanks, Matt. All right, Captain. Oh, uh, yes. Are you interested in a good rumor? What's that? Well, I had to send Fitzpatrick down to 240 this morning. He picked up the rumble that the commissioner is going to make four deputy inspectors today. Is that so? That's what he brought back. Besides what I sent him for. Yeah, well, I know the vacancies exist. Do you think you'll be one of them, Captain? If I am, I haven't heard anything about it. How much more money is it? $900. Hmm? Not bad. No, it's not. I wish you luck. 
Oh, uh, we got the boy inside who's been robbing his blinds. Have you? Yes, sir. Scanlon picked up some information on him during the night. Got his address and waited on a plant at his house. Oh, it's good. The boy came home at 7.30 this morning. He admits to mugging three women on the street and stealing their pocketbooks. He's right in that delicatessen pickup last week, too. Huh? That's a good collar, man. That's the way it looks. I've called the squad commanders from the 19th and 23rd. Maybe he'll help them clear a couple of cases, too. Want to see what he looks like? Yeah, I'd like to. Come in, Kevin. Hello, Scanlon, DeLuca. Yeah, I want you to take a look at a real miserable character, Captain. He beats up ladies on the street and robs them. He holds up delicatessen. He's 24 years old. He's never done a day's work in his life. That's not so. What's not so, bud? That I never done a day's work. I worked. I worked a lot. Who'd give you a job? I got an uncle. I worked for my uncle. Why'd he fire him? Who said he fired me? He did, didn't he? Yeah, he fired me. He made my mother sore. She hasn't spoke to him since. What'd you do? Steal from him, too? Well, not much. You didn't hit him over the head, too, like you did the ladies? No, he's my uncle. Well, you didn't kill him. As long as it's in the family. Listen, what am I going to do? Sit here all day? Don't hurry, bud. You've got time. You're lousy with time. How do you want to tell us about anything else besides those three ladies and the delicatessen? That's all there was, I swear to you. My word of honor. You know what your word of honor is worth, don't you? Come on, bud. On your feet. Where am I going? Get up. I'm right up here. Let's go. Look, I didn't mean to hurt anybody much. I just wanted the money. Makes it all right, huh? Just wanted the money. Go ahead. They grow them like that, Captain. Beats me. All right, but... Vitaly? Yes? Don't fall that thing up when you get through. I want you to print this boy. Yes? Come on, bud, over there. Captain. Right with you, man. Listen, I want to tell you, I had my fingers print before. Now, well, we want to do it again. All right, Father. Uh, give me the whole hand. I just want to save you the effort. That's it. Now, let me do the work. Just relax. I'm certainly obliged for all this, Captain. We're happy to do it, Father. All right, Father. You can wash your hands over there. Well, thank you very much. Okay, bud. Step right up there. Does the ink come off easy? Yeah, a little soap, Father. All right, you. Oh, uh, hey, Father. Oh, uh, yeah? What did you do? Me? Yeah. What they got you for? Oh, nothing serious. I returned to my office where I received a telephone call from Captain Lawrence K., commanding officer of the 12th Precinct. He wanted to know if I had heard anything of the rumor that the commissioner would make four deputy inspectors sometime during the day. I told him I'd heard the rumor, but nothing further. Neither had he. The rank of captain is the highest under civil service, and all above, including the 54 deputy inspectors, are made by appointment of the police commissioner from among the 250-odd men holding the civil service rank of captain. At 10.50 a.m., I instructed the desk officer to have a car come by the house to take me on patrol of the precinct. In the course of that patrol, I made three stops to check on various complaints and conditions. At 11.55, I told Patrolman Eisman, the operator of sector car number two in which I was riding, to return to the station house. En route, a call was broadcast reporting an automobile accident, ambulance responding, on the East River Drive near 92nd Street. I instructed him to make the run. We entered the drive at 96th Street and drove downtown with the siren open. As we neared the scene, I could see that one car was turned over on its side. Another, badly damaged, straddled the island between the lanes. Traffic, fortunately light at this time of day, was confined to one lane in either direction. We still had difficulty getting through. Broken glass nearly covered the roadway. Beside the overturned car, I saw the still figure of a man. All right, help and keep the traffic moving, Master. Sergeant? All right, All right. Captain. Ah, he looks in pretty bad shape. Yes, sir. I think he's had it. No response when we pull him out of the car. Was he in this lane, coming in this direction? Yes, sir. The woman was heading up down the other lane. She lost control, and her car jumped over the island. Mm -hmm. Is she hurt? She seems to be shaking up a lot, Captain. I thought it best to leave her sitting in her car until the ambulance gets here. All right, come on. Keep moving. Uh, how did it happen? We didn't get the full story yet, Captain. 
But from the best I can make out, another car cut in front of him. He jumped the island and hit him head on. Uh, my sir, Underwood. Right. Keep that traffic moving, will you? Get on the job. Right, sir. Did you look for identification on him, Sergeant? Uh, no, sir, not yet. The only thing is, I had the first man on the job call in with the registration numbers of his car. That's all. Well, I guess we better talk to her. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, Turner, Ryan, post yourselves over here. She's not hurt very bad? No, sir, I don't think so. Uh, what's that glass, Captain? She's lucky. Sergeant? Yes, sir? You, uh, haven't said anything to her yet about the man probably being dead. No, sir, I, I didn't want to get her set up. Good. Uh, all right, uh, Coley, Farrell, let us in there. Hello, Captain. Coley, Farrell. Uh, you feel a little better now, lady? Yeah, I, I think it sounds a little bit. My legs are kind of numb. Well, the ambulance will be here right away. Oh, I don't want to go to the hospital. Well, we'll see what happens about that. If I could only get out and, and walk around a little bit, then maybe it wouldn't feel so numb. I think you better just sit there. What's your name, please? Mrs. Rollins. Mrs. Marion Rollins. Is that R-A-W-L-I-N-S? No, no. R-A-W-L-E-N-S-E. Mrs. Marion. My, my arm hurts a little bit, too, but this one. Where do you live, Mrs. Rollins? 1232 Clinton Avenue. In the Bronx? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can we see your registration? What, what registration do you mean? For the car. Oh. And your uh, operator's license. Oh, sure. I, I didn't... My purse. I saw my purse. Oh, there it is. On the floor. Oh. I- I'll get it. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, uh, my leg is beginning to hurt a little more now. Well, you'll be all right. You want to see my license? Yes, that's right. I, I couldn't help it. That station wagon. Right in front of me. He didn't even stop. He just went right on going. And, oh, here they are. I think. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So I, I couldn't do anything. I just lost control. I went right over. And this car was coming the other way. And I... I thought I was going to be killed. I really thought. Here you are, Miss Rowland. You can put these back in your pocketbook. Okay, thank you. I, I'd like to get out and see how bad my car is damaged. Well, I think you better sit there until the ambulance comes. I'm all right. You said your leg hurts pretty bad. Well, I, I really ought to take a look. Is there much damage? This car is new this year, you know. There's a lot of damage, yes. Oh, dear. But I, uh, I don't think it's beyond repair. It's brand new, almost. I better look. No, 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 Mrs. Lord. I suggest you just wait until the ambulance gets you. Captain Canelli. Yes? I'd like to see you. I've been said there was a call broadcast for you to ring in. Oh? It wouldn't hurt to take a look, would it? Uh, just now? That's what he said. There's a call box right across the roadway there, Captain. All right. I'm entitled to that, much. Sergeant, yes, sir. I'm going to ring in. Yes, sir. Underwood, hold up that traffic a minute. Come 
Thanks, Lieutenant. You're welcome. Is he dead, Sergeant? So the ambulance attendant says. I put out a radio call for the morgue wagon. What about identification? Underwood is making a search of the body. Now, sir. Okay. The ambulance can take her to Mr. Paul. What about getting the roadway cleared here? Yes, sir. Uh, one of you. Yes, sir. Ring into the desk, officer. Tell him we need two records to clear the roadway. Tell him there was a death. Yes, sir. Well, I guess we ought to tell her. Yes, sir. I think she'll be all right. She's not hurt bad at all. I don't think. He's lucky. Yes, sir. Uh, Miss Rollins. I wish you'd let me get out and take a look at my car. We're going to send you to the hospital. Well, I'm all right, I think. Is the front end of my car all smashed up? I'm afraid it is, Mrs. Rollins. Oh, no, that's terrible. Miss Rollins, the, uh, the man in the other car is dead. Awful. Uh, taking him to Bellevue Mall. I don't know what I'm going to do. What am I going to say to you say he's dead? Yes. But uh, you claim you were cut off and lost control. If that's the case, it wasn't your fault that the man was killed. How am I going to explain it? What am I going to say? My husband will murder me. He'll just murder me. That car was brand new this year. Mrs. Rollins, still in a state of shock, was put into the ambulance and driven to Metropolitan Hospital to be treated. In the meantime, detectives from the 21st Squad and the Manhattan East Homicide Squad, which investigates all deaths and serious injuries resulting from motor vehicular accidents, began to arrive on the scene. So did the tow trucks. At 12.15, I got into sector car number two and instructed patrolman Eisman to drive me to police headquarters at 240 Center Street. We drove straight down the East River Drive to Houston Street, over to Lafayette, and down to the headquarters building. I reported to the police commissioner's office and found him not in. I sat down to wait. Meanwhile, back in the 21st, where Lieutenant Gorman was on duty as desk officer and Sergeant Waters was back on TS, the robbery suspect had been booked and taken to felony court. The victim of the automobile accident had been identified and his family notified. The business of the precinct went on. Twenty-first precinct, Sergeant Waters. Yeah. Okay. Seventeen. Oh, uh... Walk around a 44 there. Super called in and said there's a drunk sleeping in the hallway. Can't get him out. Okay. Yeah. Sergeant? Yes, sir. Give me CB on it, will you? Yes, sir. Hello, CB. Lieutenant Gorman at the 21st. Will you notify the 40th precinct? We've still been unable to make that notification for them. No answer. Yeah, hold on. Uh, Sergeant, see if that's the promotions on the teletype, will you? Yes, sir. Well, I don't know. They're so clever. 
I've never seen them, but they're there. They've been following me around. They want to kill me. I'll tell you what I'll do, Mr. Wright. You go home, and I'll see that you have adequate protection. I'm afraid to go home. They might be there. Now, Mr. Wright, it's been a long time since they first started following you around and threatening you. Isn't that right? Yes. Quite a long time. And it's been a long time since you first came in and told me about it. Isn't that right? Yes, but... Uh, Mr. Reigate, uh, step up a little closer. Now, you know how a police department has to operate. We have to do things undercover. We've been working on it. Don't you think that if we didn't work on it, they'd have forgotten you by this time? Well? Don't you think so? Yes. I suppose you're right. You don't have to worry about it, then. Just let us go on protecting you in our own secret way. You'll be all right. Ah, yes. I want to thank you, Lieutenant. You've renewed my confidence in our free institution. You're welcome, Mr. Wright. Goodbye. I'll keep in touch with you. You should have sent him to the FBI, Lieutenant. We'd have been rid of him for good. What do you want to get rid of him for? He can brighten up a dog, too. Oh. Any T.O. orders on promotion, gentlemen? No, man, not sure. <laughs> you just missed your favorite cycle, Lieutenant King. I missed him on purpose. He stayed in the back room until he went out the door. Well, he cornered me one night, and I couldn't get rid of him for an hour. What do you do it, Red? He agrees with him, Lieutenant. I'll try that next time. Is the captain still downtown, Red? As far as I know. All right, you stay there until you're released. Well, for the fact there's more money in the job, I think the captain would rather stay here. Deputy Inspector has no command. Mr. Plain Claws work, which is pretty thankless. Especially these days. There it is. Uh, that's it, all right. The following captain, having been promoted to the rank of Deputy Inspector, are transferred and assigned as indicated to take effect at the time and date specified. Brian. Hey, do you know him, man? Yeah, well, three things. Sounds right. We were still happy together. <laughs> Look how far I got and how far he got. Yes, where's he from? I never heard of him, man. This could be the last one coming up. This better be it. Vincent Keenan. Well, that does it. He might be making more than four. The rumor could have been wrong. The rumors are never wrong, Lieutenant.
an organization of more than 20,000 members of the police department, City of New York. Everett Sloan in the role of Captain Kennelly, Ken Lynch as Lieutenant King. Featured in tonight's cast were Catherine Bard, Harold Stone, Eric Dressler, Larry Haynes, Santos Ortega, and Bill Lipton. Directed by Stanley Niss. Produced for CBS Radio by John Ives. Art Hannah speaking.